Good morning to the birds. We're chirping. <laughs> What's good, y'all? We're here for Love is Blind, Season 7, Episode 12, Leap of Faith. This is the wedding's episode. This episode picks back up with Ramses and Marissa. Ramses decides he don't want to get married. And I don't know how many ways he had to tell that child that he wasn't doing this. For her to get it, she kept trying to talk him into changing his mind and trying to convince him. And I was like, baby, don't let a man tell you more than once he don't want you. I wanted to jump through the screen because I have been there. I'm speaking from experience. I've been there where Marissa is. Except for I was already married. And... A couple years in when when the conversation was had but for her I do I am happy that he did it before they actually went down the aisle but she said she couldn't wrap like she couldn't wrap her head around the fact that just two days ago he was talking about he's in it in it and two days later now he not so sure I think he said he had a conversation with um a friend and a cousin or somebody who knew him and knew how he went into his first marriage and stuff like that. And it made him pause. I feel like Ramsey should have never went on this experiment. Just like Marissa told him. Like, if this is how you feel, you should have not come to this experiment because you knew that it required you to say yes or no within three weeks. Like, if you're somebody that want to take your time to make a commitment like that, this is not the show for you. And that is true. But my heart was breaking for Because he was like, she was, she said, you you said you needed your space. So I was like, I'm content with giving you your space and think on some things. And I was like, Marissa, that was him right there saying that he don't want to get married, baby. Like, he said it. And you wasn't heeding it. Because I think you're in love with the idea of love and having a marriage. I just felt so bad for her. So bad for her. I wanted to hug her through the screen. But anywho, um, after that, we get to the two couples that are going through with actually having a wedding. That's Garrett and Taylor. Tyler and Ashley. Um, Ashley and Taylor, along with some of their friends and family, have like a rooftop, like bridal party, um, bachelorette party or something like that. And then for the guys, their bachelor party, they got to go to the Wizards game and be in a suite. They got to do something like a musical chairs. It was just like a blow up chair. And he had to dribble down and make a layup. Tyler won. He won a um, autographed basketball from the Wizards. Which, that was cool. He was like, this, this was a different experience and he enjoyed it. We got to meet his brother. The brother got the same hairdo as Ramses almost. Except, no. The brother got like a braid coming down on the side. But this, the hair up here is sparse. It's not like a bunch of hair like... How Ramses had like the curly top with the two locks on the side. But they um they get ready to have the actual wedding day. And I noticed what season did they start having all the weddings take place at the same venue on different days? Because I, I do recall, at least in, like, the first two seasons, the, weren't the people getting married at different venues? Some um, some might have been the same day. Also, I noticed on this one that we didn't get, I don't know if they weren't there or we just didn't get footage of it. But, like, in past seasons, we saw other people that were on the show um, attend other castmates' weddings, like, Marshall went to Kwame and Chelsea's wedding. I believe, um, 
Was that Kwame and Chelsea's wedding he went to? Or was it Brent and Tiffany's? I think it might have been Brent and Tiffany's. But, like, I don't recall them showing us any footage of um any of the other castmates being at each other's wedding. And then Ashley did say that Taylor was her best friend in the pods. But I don't recall seeing Taylor at Ashley's wedding to Tyler. So I was wondering about that. Also, this is the first season of Love is Blind where I've been interested to know the parents' origin stories as far as, like, especially the parents that are still married. Like, how did they come to be? How did they come together or whatever? I don't know why. I just, I'm, I'm just curious. So, anywho, um, Ashley arrives at the venue. You know, um, her people start to arrive. I think it was her godmother that came in and said, here's a gift for you. And it was this beautiful, I thought it was, uh, um, I thought it was a really pretty veil, but no. She said it was a robe, but it was so, it was so pretty. It was white. It had the overlay stuff with the beading and everything. So, so pretty. So delicate, so pretty. So I'm guessing that probably was our something new. But it was it was real nice. Real real nice. So she has a conversation about her nerves. If she nervous, she says she good. <clears throat> and her mom and her grandmom show up and she speaks on Pop, which is her grandfather. Um she said, you know, her grandmother and grandfather, I guess they was together their whole lives. Um, they never got divorced. They stayed together up until his death. And that taught her so much about relationships and marriage and what she wanted for herself and her husband. And she was saying that her, her pop's death is what made her go and reach out to her father and try to start anew with her father. Um, so she's going to have her father walk her down the aisle, hand her off to her mother, and her mom's going to give her away. She said because her mother did the heavy lifting, like, as with a lot of black girls. Oh, no, I can't even say that. Let me take that back. Erase that. It, it happens a lot, though, you know, that the moms do the heavy lifting. And it, it can happen with a mom that is single. It happens with moms that are married. Because there's some women that are single mothers inside that marriage. That the husband just goes and does lives life. He brings home. He takes care of home. But he doesn't have uh, relationships like that with the kids. In their mind, they have the mentality of like, I'm going out here and I'm working and I'm being a provider. And that's what matters most, you know. So, that's sad too. But yeah, her dad walks her down the aisle. I did like, uh, we finally see Tyler's mother. Tyler's mother looks pretty. She got tattoos up in the arm and everything. I'm like, okay, mama. Um, he said he got a little nerves and everything, but it's still hard watching Tyler. Um, knowing all that we know now. And I recently saw a TikTok video of those kids' mother. Talking about how wrong he did her. She didn't know that he was going to disown them once he got on his show. Uh, and it's just so messed up. So messed up. I can't wait for the reunion because I know it has to be a part of the reunion. I hope that it's not something that they try to sweep over the, under the rug or try to gloss over it real easy, you know. It's a big deal. A big, big deal. I was watching the... Uh, Sharonda, she got the Pale Weight channel on YouTube, and I've been watching her do, like, her panel discussions of the show, and um, one of the watchers was like, which do you think is worse? Is it, <clears throat> which situation is worse? The situation with, uh, what was that guy named from season one? He got, he took that girl. Diamond. I forgot the guy's name. But he proposed to her knowing he was bisexual. So they were saying, like, what was worse? 
the girl finding out he's bisexual, um, or a man coming in lying about kids, and he got three kids, like, which one is the worst situation? And they went on, they discussed that for a second or whatever. But I think the consensus was that this lie that Tyler told is worse than the um, somebody coming on in and letting you know that they they bisexual. Um, um, what was I about to say? Like, Tyler even tells the friends, like, he ready for this, he been wanting this, they're going to have kids. They gonna wait a year, and if and the friend was like, "You gonna have kids immediately?" He was like, "She she wanna wait at least a year, but yep, we are gonna have kids." And I'm just like, "But you got three already." <sighs> I just can't not see that when I see him, but I like that when it came time for the ceremony, instead of a girl throwing flowers, which we didn't see that. We saw two ballerinas dance a bouquet of flowers down the aisle and hand them off to uh, Ashley's mom. I thought that was super pretty, different, very different and very pretty. It reminded me of the Prince video where Dominique Dawes was doing flips and stuff across um, the video. That's what their uh, dancing reminded me of. Remember that video by Prince? Could you be the most beautiful girl in the world? Yeah. And Dominique Dawes did that. That was really pretty. But anywho, Taylor come, mm -mm, Ashley comes down. And of course, they both say I do. This part was already spoiled for me. Because I was watching Jessie Wu um, reviews. And she had that lady, Ricky from TikTok on there, and the TikTok lady had, had already spoiled it. She played the video not knowing the lady was going to say that. And when it, once the lady said that, she hurried up and cut the video off. But we are, I already knew that these two was going to say I do and get married. And then I heard something else about them that I'm not going to spoil for anyone in case they didn't see it or haven't heard of it yet. But it remains to be seen once we see the reunion, if it is true. But yeah, then them two get married and have their reception. Then we get Taylor and Gary. What I will say, I do like this season. They folk they focused on both couples. Both couples got an even amount of airtime in the episode for their weddings. Cause the last season with A D and Clay they spent so much time. They gave AD and Clay about 55, 45 to 55 minutes of that wedding episode and gave the Hispanic girl and her husband um, about 15, 20 minutes. It was like they were an afterthought. And I thought that was so wrong. But they actually got an equal amount of time between the two couples of this season. That actually made it to the aisle. Or made it down the aisle. So we see. We meet Taylor's dad. And for some reason. I don't know if I said it. In my um, review. For the first couple episodes. But something in me told me. That Taylor's dad was a white man. Something told me that she was biracial. I don't know what it was. But I just knew it. So we get to meet him. He goes and meet up with Garrett. Um, he was, um, telling him basically, like, she is a very beautiful, rare gift I'm giving to you. And he gave him some real, real ish. Like, every day in the marriage is in rainbows. But once you make it past, like, like, if you can see it through, like, and be there for one another. Because that's what it really is. Choosing to be there with one another. Through all the ups and downs of life. Y'all will be good. And I meant to say. Um, Ashley's dad basically said the same thing. Because he even hinted at having regrets of. When things got bad. Choosing to leave. And then years, years later. 
he thought to himself, dang, if I would have fought through. Because after the rain, the sun eventually comes back out. So it is good times on the other side of the bad patches, you know. He kind of like, he kind of hinted at having some regrets with his relationship with her mother. Or with some things in his life and choices that he made. So Taylor's dad says that same kind of thing to Garrett. And Garrett was like, I got a little bit of nerves, but I'm so happy. Like, I really, really love Taylor. And I just want to be there to help her be whatever, whoever it is that she wants to be in this life. And I was like, yeah, he really genuinely loved that girl. I thought it was super cute that both Taylor's dad and Garrett both have, because I'm guessing this thing on his face right here was a birthmark. It kind of looked like the thing. One of my cousins was born with what they call a strawberry, which looks like that on his face. And his br it was red, and it was on their butt. Um, but eventually, by the time they were like one, one or two, it was like it was completely gone. But um, it looks like that's a birthmark right there on Taylor's dad face. His name was Tom, and then Garrett has a birthmark like right in here. So they have a good conversation. He, um, he helped him with his bow tie. He wasn't. He was. He was like, I apologize. I can't help you with your pocket square and stuff. And he was like, It's all good. It's all good. So he went back over to talk to Taylor and her mom, and was like, I went to meet Garrett, and it was all good. Um, he did <clears throat> make some. Make sure to mention that, you know, have your friends and family there to support you at all the times of your life. Because he was saying that he had a brother, like his brother passed away. And Taylor was with him through that. Fong held the family together through the rough times. And he knows that Taylor has that part of her mother and her. And she'll be the same type of person for Garrett. Also, uh, he talked about the groomsmen he had on his wedding day and how only four of them are left. He was saying one of his best friends passed away just a month for this. I was like, dang, dang. He was like, and then Fong is just there for me each and every step of the way. And that's what you need in a partner, somebody to be there through all the good and the bad times, all of them. And it's not easy, you know, helping people through grief. It's, and it's not. It's definitely not. But I feel like they had a really good conversation. I feel like her father really respects him. And he was like, welcome. he basically welcomed him and said, I'm glad I'm getting you as my son-in-law or whatever. So that was good. And then he goes to have a conversation with Taylor, like I said. Um, and they made, made sure to mention that <clears throat> they also were married on the 13th of the month. And Taylor is getting married on the 13th of the month as well. So they, they was like, that's, that's like good luck and stuff. I was like, oh, cool. But I really, really want to know. Them two, Taylor's parents, is what prompted me to say, I want to know. The origin story of them. Like was he in the military. And he met her. During his time in the military. Married her and brought her back to America. Or did they meet in America. And start dating. I'm very curious to know. We see. Garrett. Have a conversation with his parents. They both showed up. And. They're talking to him. About watching him grow up. And how good of a person he is, and he think Taylor's a good person too, and they are not going to try to talk him out of this. And I was, well, at least that's what the mother said. But I'm just like, well, in all the other episodes, when Garrett was telling Taylor, basically, you was trying to talk him out of it. And I'm not going to stop thinking and saying that it was you who encouraged that ex-girlfriend to reach out and send him a DM or a text message or whatever it was. I believe it was you that did that. And once that for that was foiled and he ain't like go head into that, then you like took a step back and got yourself together. But for you to say that you're not gonna try to talk him out of it, 
Because you already know his mind is made up. But that's a far cry from what, from what we were told and that you had been saying in your conversations with him in the previous episodes. Ma'am. And the sister was there sitting in the audience too. But uh, she hugs Garrett um, and cry and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, but I think her real issue is the, the mothers with them sons and the fact that he's going to move to California to be with Taylor. I think that's one of the bigger things that's bothering his mother, that he made this decision in three weeks and going to move across the country. Also, I forgot to mention this about Tyler and Ashley's wedding. They had a white officiant. Excuse me, and the fact that he told the origin story of couples jumping the broom, black couples specifically, why they jumped the broom and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty cool. And whoever made the broom that they jumped over, that broom was so pretty. I remember that was the big thing in the early 2000s. People made a business out of making brooms for for weddings, for, um, for brides. I know my mom made my broom, but yeah, people like and making those bouquets with the silk flowers, that was like a big deal in the early, in weddings in the early two thousands. I don't know if they're really doing it like that no more, but yeah, that was a big thing. Let me clear my throat. <coughs> <coughs> okay, that's a little bit better. I'm back, y'all. But anyway. They um also before they proceed with the wedding before the conversation is over, we find out that Garrett's parents also got married on the thirteenth of the month. I was just like, oh wow, what a coinky dake! So they go through with the wedding. It was really pretty. Taylor's dress. I think they just showed us the dress from the waist up because I didn't realize that it was only. A knee length dress with a little bit of a split in the front, and then the back part was where the uh, train was, is and where the length was. But she looked really, really pretty. It was not a traditional wedding gown, but it fit her. It really did, and I'm happy for them. They said I do. They're going to have their receptions, and it looked like Ashley. And Tyler reception was lit. It looked like a real, real good time. A real good time. But, oof, I can't wait for the reunion, for all the things to get discussed. I wonder if, after um, Ramses broke it off with Marissa, did Marissa go back and try to reach out to Bowden? She should have went with Bowden from the beginning. But when they met up at the flapper party, she said she got just friend vibe from them because they was too similar. And the fact that Rams is going to tell that lady, I don't know, like, it's your... Because he told her, I needed space. Then it was, I'm not sure. Then it was, I'm trying to see if we fit together. Day to day. Because your personality and my personality. You so bubbly. And she was like, but you said that was what you loved about me. You loved me for who I was. And I am a bubbly person. And the fact that she tried to say, like, I, that's why I chose you. Um, I feel like when I get too bubbly, you can tell me to calm down. Don't dim your light, honey. And that's what he doing. Why would you sit there and dim your light? Acquiesce to dimming your light and yourself to appease him. Marriage comes with, any relationship comes with give and take and compromises. But in no way should you ever, not, you shouldn't be compromising being a bubbly spirit for somebody. Like, no. That's not something, that's just who you are as a person at the core of your being. You can't dim that. If anybody asks you to do that, it's a it's an automatic no to them. They're not for you. They're not your person. 
Marissa, I hope you get everything good there is to get in this life. I hope you meet your mister and have your happily ever after. I really, really do. But the signs were there. When he spoke of being so progressive, in the minute y'all get back from Mexico and start to, like, try to stay together, first of all, the conversation about birth control, you don't want to use it. You want kids soon. But you say, I I don't want to have a kid, but I am wanting to use condoms. And he said, well, I don't want to have sex without, I mean, sex with condoms on. But you also said that you stuck by her and her decision not to go on birth control. Which one is it, Ramses? How can you support her not wanting to put to use birth control? And she say, all right, and you say you don't want kids, but you also don't want to use protection when y'all have sex. Like, that right there should have been um, a, part, a cause for concern and really, really reevaluating this relationship. Was it worth proceeding? Because that don't go. And then she was, she had PMS. And she turned you down for sex because she was going through PMS and having her menses. And the way that you reacted to her about that, I was just like, but you so progressive. That is not progressive. That was some bull crap you sold her to get her in them parts. You, not as pro you are not progressive at all. Not to me. And you, not to me. Where it, where it matters, not to me. I was just like, mm mm. He and the He Man. Oh no, I can't say He and the He Man. He, woman hitting club that Al Bundy used to be in. But that right there was the red flag. And I felt like Marissa just ignored it because she just wanted the fairy tale. And it just didn't happen. But that's it for Love is Blind Season 7. Then we wait for the reunion and see what's going to come out at the reunion. I wish they, um, it seems like they phasing. Phasing out showing Nick and Vanessa so much. I wish they would do that for these reunions. They need, you know, who else has a good take on this show? Benny's take on YouTube and Instagram. Her, Jesse Wu, Sharonda, Tate's take, all of them would be great hosts for this reunion. Because Vanessa and Nick not going to ask the questions that need to be asked. They just not. They're going to gloss over a bunch of stuff I'm already knowing. But I'm still curious to see what this reunion going to look like. But uh, i see y'all next time. Hope y'all enjoyed this. Now it's time I get up and get ready for work. Bye.